Anda harus tahu mengenali diri Anda sendiri. Apa yang Anda mau, apa yang Anda suka, apa yang Anda bisa. Oke? Okay? Um, semua ini, knowing more about yourself is even more important, khususnya di era zaman now. Kenapa? Karena zaman sekarang ada begitu banyak kesempatan. Siapa yang merasa kecepat kesempatan zaman sekarang itu jauh lebih banyak dibandingkan dengan kesempatan 10 tahun yang lalu? Ya, betul makin banyak? Betul, oke? Okay. You have to know, to know for yourself what you want, what you like, what you can, okay? All of this knowing more about yourself is even more important, especially in the present era. Why? Because nowadays, there are so many opportunities. Who feels that today's opportunities are far greater than those of 10 years ago? It is true that more and more, right? Okay. Nah, karena kesempatannya makin banyak, sekarang saya tanya. Apakah opportunity is good? Yakin? Hmm, jawabannya belum tentu. Opportunity might not be good. Tergantung. Opportunity can be an obstacle. Kesempatan itu kadang bisa menjadi penghalang untuk kesuksesan Anda. Kalau Anda tidak mengerti siapa diri Anda. Nah, apa yang saya maksud dengan ini? Yang saya maksud dengan ini seperti ini. Ada begitu banyak kesempatan, ada begitu banyak cara. Dan kalau Anda tidak mengerti dan tahu apa yang Anda suka dan apa yang Anda bisa, dan apa yang Anda mau dalam hidup ini, Anda akan terbawa arus. Jadi bingung. No, because there are more opportunities. Now I ask if opportunity is good. Sure, the answer is uncertain. Opportunity may not be good. Depending on the opportunity can be an obstacle. Sometimes, that opportunity can be a barrier to your success. If you don't understand who you are. Well, what do I mean by this? What I mean is like this. There are so many opportunities. There are so many ways. And if you don't understand and know what you like, and what you can, and what you want in life, you will be carried away, become confused. Anda mendengarkan Captain Vincent, wah kayaknya jadi pilot enak, jadi YouTuber. Wah kalau gitu saya juga pengen, jadi pilot bisa sukses, jadi YouTuber bisa sukses. Anda mendengarkan uh, Asraf ngomong, wah jadi investor kalau gitu, saya pengen bangun startup, akhirnya ngikut, pengen startup. Wah saya pengen bangun bisnis properti, akhirnya ngikut, pengen bisnis properti. Ah pengen jadi motivator juga, ikut. You listen to Captain Vincent, it's like being a good pilot, being a YouTuber. Oh, if that's the case, I also want to be a successful pilot. So a YouTuber can be successful. You listen to Ashraf talk about being an investor. That I want to build a startup. Finally, I want to start up. Wow, I want to build a property business finally i want to join the property business ah uh, i want to be a motivator too come along ada begitu banyak contoh orang sukses di bidang yang sangat berbeda betul atau betul oke okay. dan mereka bisa sukses ya bisa nah tapi ada banyak cara untuk menuju kesuksesan kalau anda nggak tahu apa yang anda mau apa anda nggak tahu apa yang anda suka dan apa yang anda nggak bisa you eventually get lost anda akan bingung, yang mana nih kalau gitu, ini, itu, ini, itu, semuanya mau. Tapi semuanya tidak dilakukan dengan baik, akhirnya tidak berhasil. There are countless examples of successful people in very different fields. Is that correct or correct? Okay, and can they be successful or not? Can. Well, but there are many paths to success. If you don't know what you want, you don't know what you like and what you can, you'll eventually get lost. You will be confused about which one then. This is that. This is uh, what everyone wants, but everything is not well done. In the end, it didn't work. Nah, inilah satu hal yang sangat penting yang saya selalu bagikan. Makanya uh, workshop pertama kali yang saya buat ketika pertama kali saya sampai ke Indonesia itu adalah yang namanya Life Mastery. Saya nggak ngajarin tentang bisnis, saya nggak ngajarin tentang sales, saya ngajarin tentang Life Mastery. Kenapa? Karena paling penting menurut saya untuk sukses cuma dua formulanya. Right Direction and Right Strategy. 
this is one very important thing that I always share. That's why the first workshop I held when I first came to Indonesia was called Life Mastery. I don't teach about business, I don't teach about sales, I teach about life mastery. Why? Because in my opinion, the most important for success is only two formulas, right direction and right strategy. Anda harus tahu dulu, Anda mau kemana, Anda siapa, dan baru habis itu cari strateginya. Secara simpel saya kasih seperti ini. Ada banyak kunci untuk menuju kesuksesan, betul? Dan Anda sibuk kumpulin, wah semua kunci dikumpulin. Ikut sana, ikut sini. Tapi yang paling penting adalah, yang di depan Anda itu, Anda tahu nggak pintu apa? Walaupun kunci ini, Anda bilang, wah kunci ini bisa kok membuka pintu kesuksesan. Ya iya itu pintu yang itu, pintu yang ada di hadapan Anda, pintu yang mana? Anda harus tahu dulu pintunya apa, supaya Anda bisa cari kunci yang tepat, baru kunci itu bisa kebuka. You have to know. Where you are going first, know who you are and just run out looking for a strategy. I simple tell you like this, there are many keys to success, right? And you are busy collecting. Wow, all the keys are collected. Come here, come there. But the most important thing is that you know what the door is in front of you. Even though this key, Wow, this key can really open the door to success. Yes, yes, that's that door. Which door is in front of you? You have to know what the door is first, so you can find the right key. Then the key can be open. Oke, okay. yang salah bukan kuncinya, yang salah adalah kombinasinya. Nah, banyak orang mereka belajar skill ini, belajar ke sana, tapi mereka nggak ngerti, nggak tahu, akhirnya mereka get lost dan bingung. Oh, saya nggak sukses sukses juga. Oke, okay? so it's very important for you to know more about yourself. Oke, okay. what's wrong is not the key. That is wrong is the combination. Many people they learn their skills, learn skills there, but they don't understand. They don't know that they eventually get lost and confused how come I'm not successful either. So it's very important for you to know about yourself. Apa yang Anda bisa? What is your passion? Um, what do you like? Apa mimpi Anda? Apa tujuan hidup Anda? Bisnis itu gak gampang. Anda ngelihat sendiri, Astra cerita. Walaupun dia sudah tahu apa yang dia suka dan dia bisa, itu pun masih banyak kendala, itu pun masih gagal. Apalagi untuk orang yang nggak tahu apa yang dia mau dan nggak tahu apa kelebihannya dia, nggak dan nggak tahu apa potensinya dia, akan jauh lebih susah, akan jauh lebih tahu. What can you do? What is your passion? Um, what do you like? What is your What is your dream? What is the purpose of your life? Business is not easy. You saw Ashraf's own story even though he already knows what he likes and he can. Even then, there are still many obstacles. Even then, it still fail. Especially for people who don't know what they want and don't know what his strength is and don't know what potential he has. It will be much harder. It will be much tough. Um, saya kasih analogi lagi. Ini keluhan banyak orang, ya banyak orang mengeluh, aduh saya sakit, akhirnya pergi ke dokter cantik ini. Ya. Dia pergi ke dokter dan dia mengeluhkan, dokter saya sakit. Terus dokternya tanya, sakit apa? Semua sakit dokter, semua badan saya sakit. Saya pegang kepala, aduh sakit. Saya pegang leher, aduh sakit. Saya pegang hidung, juga sakit. Pegang tangan sakit, pegang paha sakit. Semua yang saya pegang semuanya sakit. Waduh, gimana nih dok? Badan saya sakit semua. I give another analogy. This is the complaint of many people. Many people complain that I was sick and finally I went to this beautiful doctor. He went to the doctor and he complained. Doctor, I was sick. Then the doctor asked, what is it sick? Doctor, all hearts. All my body is sick. I hold the head. 
Oh, it's hard. I hold the neck. Oh, it's hard. I hold my nose. It's hard too. Hold the hand grips the short thick. Everything I hold is all thick. Oops, how about this dog? My body hurts all. Kira-kira apa yang dikatakan oleh dokternya? Mungkin yang sakit bukan seluruh tubuh kamu. Mungkin yang sakit adalah tangan kamu. Kalau tangan kamu patah, mungkin tangan kamu lagi patah. Bayangkan Anda punya tangan, tangannya ini lagi patah. Kondisi tangan patah, ada di sini yang pernah merasakan patah tulang? Ya, Anda patah tulang, Anda pegang apapun juga, Anda tekan, pasti kerasa sakit. Anda pegang kepala sakit, Anda pegang tangan sakit, Anda pegang paha sakit. Semuanya jadi sakit dan Anda mengambil kesimpulan, oh kalau gitu hidup saya semua sakit. Padahal yang sakit sebenarnya cuma tangannya aja. Mungkin tangannya kesleo, mungkin tangannya luka. I wonder what the doctor said. Maybe it's not your whole body that hurts. Maybe it's your hand that hurt. If your hand is broken, maybe your hand is broken again. Imagine you have a hand. It is broken again. Broken hand. Has anyone here ever felt a broken bone? Yes, you have broken a bone. You hold on to whatever you press. It will definitely hurt. You hold the sore head, you hold the sore hand, you hold the sore thing. Everything hurts and you conclude, oh, then my life is all sick. Even though the one that hurts is actually only his hand. Maybe he sprained his hand, maybe his hand was injured. Nah, seringkali itu yang terjadi dalam hidup kita. Kita merasa, wah hidup saya susah banget, gak ada potensi, saya gak bisa ngapa-ngapain. Hidup saya hancur, berantakan, semuanya salah. Saya memang gak berguna. Padahal mungkin yang salah adalah mindsetnya. Yang salah adalah cara berpikirnya. Satu hal kecil, tapi kalau itu nempel dan nyebar kemana-mana, bisa merasakan seperti semuanya sakit. So, often times that happens in our lives, we feel, wow, my, my life is really hard. There's no potential, I can't do anything. My life is falling apart, everything is wrong. I'm useless, even though maybe what's wrong is the mindset. What's wrong is the way of thinking. One small thing, but if it sticks and spreads, everywhere you can feel like everything hurts. If, nah, have a good mindset. Um, salah satu mindset yang menurut saya mindset paling parah adalah mental miskin. Atau istilah kerennya sekarang adalah Miss Queen. Nah, yang ketawa ini pasti zaman milenial ya, tahu ya. Oke, ngelihat orang lain, wah keren banget. Aduh, jiwa Miss Queen ku keluar. Benar? Iya kan? Terus udah gitu ngelihat teman-teman keluar negeri, hai sobat Miss Queen. Iya kan? Mereka sih bisa, tapi kalau sobat-sobat Miss Queen kayak kita mah nggak akan mungkin bisa. Pernah? Berpikiran seperti itu, merasa bahwa kita nggak punya, nggak mampu, dan zaman sekarang kayak tadi, jiwa Miss Queen, oke? Okay. Well, have a good mindset. One of the mindsets that in my opinion, the worst mindset is mental poverty. Or the cool term now is Miss Queen. The one who loves is definitely the millennial era, you know? Okay, looking at other people is really good. Ouch, my Miss Queen soul is out, right? Yes, right. Then seeing friends abroad, hi Miss Queen Paul, right? They can, but if Miss Queen friends are rich, we want to be able. Have you ever thought like that? Feeling that we don't have it, and nowadays it's like before. Miss Queen soul, okay. Ketika saya membuat program Life Master itu di ultimate program yang dari awal sampai hari ini pun juga masih saya bawakan secara personally. Kenapa? Karena menurut saya orang itu harus benar-benar mengenal dirinya dia. Dia harus tahu, what do you want? Apa tujuannya? Apa yang kamu suka? Apa yang kamu bisa? And it's all start with the mindset. When I created the Life Master program, it was the ultimate program which I still carry out personally from the beginning until today. Why? Because I think that person should really know him or her. 
He must know what do you want, what is the purpose, what do you like, what can you, and it all starts with the mindset. Dan saya pengen bilang untuk anda semua yang selalu merasa ah miskin, nggak bisa, nggak punya apa-apa, ya nggak punya kapasitas, nggak punya potensi. Oke, okay? today I'm going to tell you. Oke, okay? banyak orang bilang miskin, poverty. The greatest poverty is not a poverty of money, but a poverty of dreams and action. And I want to say to all of you who always feel poor, can have nothing, you don't have the capacity, don't have the potential, today I'm going to tell you. Many people say poverty, the greatest poverty is not a poverty of money, but a poverty of dreams and action. Jadi, bukan miskin harta yang sebenarnya paling membuat orang itu menderita. Bukan miskin harta yang sebenarnya membuat orang itu tidak bahagia. Tapi terlebih, miskin akan mimpi dan miskin akan tindakan. Miskin akan harapan dan miskin akan tindakan. Dan itulah yang selalu saya ungkapkan kepada Anda semua, berani bermimpi besar, dare to dream big. Dan saya nggak akan pernah bosan-bosannya bilang, berapapun usia Anda, apapun yang pernah terjadi dalam hidup Anda, apapun profesinya, you got to dare to dream big. So, it is not well poor that actually makes that person suffer the most. Not the misqueen of wealth that actually makes that person unhappy. But even more, poor dreams and poor in action. Poor for health, poor for hope, poor for action. And that's what I always tell you all, dare to dream big, dare to dream big. And I will never be bored saying, whatever your age, whatever has happened in your life, whatever your profession, you've got to dare to dream big. Saya adalah contoh nyatanya. 19 tahun yang lalu saya bukan siapa-siapa. Waktu itu saya masih kuliah, usia 20 tahun, hidup dengan keterbatasan, hidup dengan penuh kekurangan. Tapi yang sudah nonton filmnya, yang sudah baca bukunya, Anda tahu. Di malam itu, Ketika saya ulang tahun ke-20, saya memberanikan diri untuk berani bermimpi besar. I'm a real example. 19 years old ago, I was nothing. At that time, I was still 20 years old in college, living with limitation, living with shortcomings. But those of you who have watched the film, who have read the book, you know, on that night when I gave my 20th birthday, I had the courage to have the courage to dream big. Walaupun pada saat itu saya miskin harta, tapi saya tidak miskin impian. Walaupun saat itu saya miskin makanan, tapi saya tidak miskin harapan. Dan berawal dari sebuah mimpi, saya buat dream book, waktu itu dream booknya masih kecil, Saya tempelkan semua hal-hal yang saya inginkan, saya tahu apa yang saya mau, saya doakan itu, saya yakinkan itu. Dan akhirnya perlahan-lahan saya mulai melihat mimpi-mimpi yang saya tempelkan itu menjadi kenyataan. Even though at that time I was poor in wealth, I was not a dream poor. Even though at that time I was poor in food, but I was not hopeful. And starting from a dream, I made a dream book at the time. The dream book was still small. I attach all the things that I want. I want to know what I want. I pray that I can assure you of that. And finally, slowly, I began to see the dreams I was thinking to come true. Dan itulah yang terus menerus saya lakukan. Dari sebuah buku kecil dream book, akhirnya terupgrade, jadi besar, akhirnya jadi besar vision board, dan sampai ini. Mega vision board yang saya buat uh, bersama dengan suami saya. Oke, okay. um, this is how we spend our Valentine. Ya, jadi beberapa tahun yang lalu kita pikir, wah ini waktunya kita untuk mengupgrade mimpi-mimpi kita. Um, dan di hari Valentine, romantis ya, <laughs> kita buat mimpi-mimpi kita yang lebih besar lagi, yang lebih megah lagi. 
Dan itulah juga yang selalu saya ungkapkan dan saya bagikan. Anda harus punya mimpi, berani bermimpi besar. Dan jangan pernah takut ketika Anda menempelkan mimpi-mimpi itu. Ya, Kadang-kadang kalau di uh, workshop saya Life Mastery, banyak orang, aduh mimpi saya ketinggian gak ya Miss Mary? Mimpi saya ini masuk akal gak ya? Saya pengen sih ada gambar ini, pengen saya tempel, tapi mungkin gak sih? And that's what I keep doing from all the dream book booklets. Finally getting upgrade to be. Finally, it become a big vision board, and this is the mega vision board that I made together with my husband. This is how spend we spend our Valentine. So a few years ago, we thought it was our time to upgrade our dreams. And on Valentine's Day, it's romantic. We make our dreams bigger, bigger, and that's what I always express and share. You must have a dream, there to dream big. And don't ever be afraid when you pass those dreams into a cage. If in my workshop, there are a lot of people on the live mastery of my dream. My Miss Mary, does my dream make sense? I want to this image, want me to temple, but maybe not. And they always say, Mimpi itu nggak perlu logical because dream is magical. Okay? Dream is not logical, but dream is magical. Mimpi itu nggak perlu harus masuk akal. Tapi mimpi itu justru bisa membuat kita menjadi sosok yang luar biasa. Dare to dream big, berani bermimpi besar. Apa mimpi sejuta dolar Anda? Dan yakinlah kalau saya Mary Rana saja bisa, saya yakin anda, 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 anda semua pun pasti bisa. Okay? And I always say dreams don't need logical because dreams are magical. Dreams not logical but dream is magical. Dreams don't have to make sense but they can actually make us extraordinary figures. There to dream big. There to dream big. What is your million dollar dream? And rest assured, if I marry Rihanna can, I'm sure you, 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 you all can do it. Okay.